The days of praying to RNG Jesus are over, and no longer do we have to grind endless hours for enemy cards to achieve the coveted platinum trophy. I have found a way to quickly and reliably obtain enemy cards without relying on luck. If you don't care about how or why this method works, just use the timestamps to jump ahead to the section about the process. If you do care about the explanation, just stay where you are as we'll start momentarily. Before we get further into this video, I need to say that right now I'm not covering these four enemy cards. It's not because they can't be obtained in the way outlined in this video, but rather that they have proven quite troublesome to find. Don't worry though, I will eventually get around to finding these also, and then I'll make a follow up video. We know that when the last enemy of a wave is defeated, there is a small chance that the enemy will drop its corresponding enemy card. The system determining whether the card drops or not is called an RNG, which stands for the Random Number Generator. Because a computer can only do exactly what we have programmed it to do, it cannot create random numbers, but it can do something close to that, generating pseudo-random numbers. To create these pseudo-random numbers that mimic random numbers, the computer often uses a lot of different variables to create numbers that cannot easily be predicted. Examples of variables that can be used to create these pseudo-random numbers could be the time of day, number of steps walked in a game, or the HP of the player. In Rechain of Memories we are lucky. The RNG isn't dependent on the time of day or the steps walked, but rather factors we can easily control, like how many times we've dodge rolled or swung our keyblade. Furthermore, it happens that almost all of these variables are reset every single time we go to the start screen which means we have an easy way of controlling the RNG and thus controlling which cards the enemies drop. One thing that isn't reset by going to the start screen is the battles we have been in, but we can minimize the impact of this by choosing other parameters carefully. Another factor that determines the RNG is the cards equipped. From my experimentation it seems that the type of card or its value doesn't matter. As long as it's a non-enemy card then it simply isn't counted. The basic idea of the process is that we set up a room wherein the enemy whose cat we are interested in reside. We arrange our deck, save and go to the start screen to reset the RNG and then boot up a fresh save file. A series of rolls and attacks are then performed to feed the RNG all the right data and then we go into fight to claim the card. With that short description, let's take a more in-depth look. We are going to use the slide Warp Alert, so make sure that you have it. It's obtained from the Room of Rewards in Acrobat and it's activated by using Stop combined with two arrow cards. For a specific card we also use the slide Holy, which can be learned by leveling up from level 47. Holy is used by stocking Mega Ether together with Mega Elixir and a third item card. So how this is going to work is that for each card you will see a clip and in it you'll receive 6 important pieces of information. The world, the room, what deck to have equipped, how many times to roll, whether to attack the enemy or not, and which enemy to engage. The idea is then that you just try to replicate exactly what I do. Let's try to watch a clip. We can see that the world is Traverse Town, the room is Sleeping Darkness and the deck is 2 Warp Slides and 6 Attack Cards. Before acquiring an enemy card we always need to do a bit of preparation. Using the knowledge from the clip we make our way to Traverse Town and open a moment's reprieve so that we can save. Then we open the next room so that it's a Sleeping Darkness room, which we observed from the clip. We equip the deck we saw in the clip, save and then go to the start screen. The save is loaded and we remember that we need to do 4 dodge rolls before we engage the soldier heartless enemy by just running into it. In the battle we just spam triangle as if our life depended on it. Because of how the RNG works, it's highly likely that you don't get the card in the first try and you then just repeat the last step again. 
A quick way to get to the start screen is by holding L1 and R1 and then press the options button. While you might not get the card in the first try, you should have it by your second or third try, or at least before the fifth. Keep in mind that some cards are harder to get and you might have to do up to 10 tries. When watching the clip, you can see what the enemy wave that drops the card looks like. So if you get into a battle and it's the wrong wave, just use the L1R1 trick. Generally, the decks are made so you just need to press triangle as fast as you can. With that said, there is an exception, but I'll mention it when the time comes. In the preparation part, you don't have to recreate the room between every enemy card you get, but you do need to save and reload every time. While you aren't allowed to dodge roll or attack more than shown in the clips, you are free to jump, glide and move between rooms without interfering with the RNG. One thing that does interfere with the RNG though, is if the enemies get to move in battle. If the enemies move beside their spawning animation, you can wave goodbye to the enemy cards. Now that we know the process, here comes the method to acquiring 26 out of the 30 available enemy cards. The Dark Ball enemy card can only be obtained by Ryuku and is therefore not on this list. This is one of the cards that might take up to 10 tries to get. This is a special one. Inside the room, first destroy the single barrel without hitting anything else, and then destroy the two adjacent barrels with a single swing.
You have to be very precise with the timing here. If you use the second slide too fast, the new shadows don't die, and if you do it too slow, they move and screw up the RNG. It takes a bit of practice to get it right. That's it for this video, I hope you've enjoyed it as it took well over a hundred hours to make. I'll see you in the next one. <laughs>